I uh, think we're, we really think we're good. All right, I guess we are live. So welcome to Alfred and the Fetic. Uh, Alfred and the Fetic is arguably the least not a game of all the, the games that are on this cartridge. And uh, my couch is joined by a couple distinguished gentlemen. Go ahead, guys, introduce thyselves. My name is uh, Jungle Storm, also running this game. Uh, and I'm Fizu or Fizu or Fuzzy or I don't know. My name doesn't come with a pronunciation guide. And I hate this game and never ever want to see it again. So Koal asked me to commentate it. Yes, thank you very Obviously. much for agreeing. Uh, because we are ahead of schedule, we're going to see Alfred twice. Uh, we're going to do the 100% route first and then the any percent route. And the difference is very simple. In 100%, I'm going to be killing all of the pasta that I can reach. And in the any percent, I'll be jumping over as much of the pasta as I can jump over. Uh, the latter is substantially less marathon safe. So that's why we put in the 100%. But again, we're way ahead of schedule. So I hope you really like Alfred and the Fedic because we're going to see it twice. So I'm going to dive right in now, and this is the 100% route. Now you can see that Alfred is uh, kind of a big deal. He's got a fancy hat and some pretty sweet whatever he's wearing. I think it's a Totoro cosplay or something. I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, but I'm going to get off the couch to sort of walk me through this, because trying to play this game and talk is actually really difficult. I, I think he's, he's wearing a, a onesie. I can't remember what they're called. The, the animal ones? Oh yeah, onesie, yeah. Yeah, maybe the, the upper part, the beanie part came with it or something, I don't know. <laughs> Possibly. Um, this this game is actually surprisingly in-depth for a game that looks as utterly execrable as it is. Um, Koal walked me through all of his strats for this game, and uh, level one I think is mostly based on memorization in that there is no RNG on where enemies spawn or anything like that. Uh, you just have to make sure not to get too close to their uh, the, uh, the pasta's uh, hitboxes because they tend to be sort of unpredictable. So uh, when you stand on platforms like uh, the one that you see just there, uh, you kind of have to make sure not to stand too close to the right if there is a pasta next to it. Level 2, on the other hand, uh, this one, I think Koal told me, is more to do with visual cues. Um, the, yeah. the dangerous enemies are the ones that sort of run and charge towards you, and whenever they appear, uh, you will see an electrical outlet on screen. Um, yeah, you can actually uh, remember by uh, hitting them uh, from before the wall socket, uh, socket or after the wall socket. At least that's how I sort of uh, have approached it, really. See, this is, this is the problem with this game. I can't believe how much effort you two have put into actually learning how to run this game. It would be honest uh, not to mention Coughing Rocks as well, who actually held the world record for a brief period of time. <laughs> I also just demonstrated the screen wrap technique. That's a real thing. You can do that uh, because it resets your velocity yeah. for fall damage. Uh, if you keep swinging the pan, you can actually survive falls of infinite height, and it will screen wrap you around to the top of the screen. Yeah, because yeah, good programming. That's 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 how falling works, you know. It's it's after you go a certain distance you die. It's not when you hit the ground. Yeah, keep yourself All those... alive. You won't die. <laughs> uh, level three, from what I was told, is less about patterns or memorization or anything. It's more about very specific locations where you want to stand. Bits on the wallpaper. Um, you need to remember where they are and stand there and get the timing rights to kill the enemies. Um, yeah, especially in relation to uh, the moving uh, FedEx that you see here. So that yes. was uh, that was one uh, loop on 100%, and I forgot to start my timer, but no biggie there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the any percent route, and I'm really not going to talk on this one because this is quite a lot more challenging, <laughs> and it's quite likely that I'm going to game over and have to do this more than once. So uh, here we go, fingers crossed, we'll see how this goes. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, right away, right away, right off the top of the bat. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take an intentional death, get my game over, and start over again. That is quite the death animation. Yeah. This is uh, a two, yeah. sometimes three frame window to make these jumps. Yeah, the reason why uh, jumping is faster is that swinging your colander to actually kill things slows you down. Um, which is why, if you're trying to speedrun this, jumping over enemies is by far faster, and uh, missing enemies is a very, very bad thing to do. Um, every swing slows you down slightly. Yeah. Also, keep in mind, um, if you do press the button uh, more deeply, uh, the jump button, you tend to, uh, not to jump as... or you tend to jump up first rather than to the right. So what you might want to do is uh, jump more lightly or press the button more lightly and that will actually give you the extra velocity that you need to jump over some of these uh, pastas. 
yeah, Koal mentioned to me that uh, a lot of the, the controls regarding the jumps are really, really weird. Um, like if you push jump and then push right, you jump further. Uh, while if you're holding right and you push the jump button, there's a delay and he doesn't jump as far or something along those lines. Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird physics, but that's action 52 for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This, much as I hate this game, this is not actually one of the worst games on Action 52. Um, now, I could make the claim that this is more like the more fully fleshed out of the games uh, that are uh, available on the cartridge. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's definitely a game. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's uh, to see this develop as such a hot speed game over the course of the summer was a pretty nice thing to see. Suddenly, everybody was uh, running the Section 52 games. Uh, if you look at the speedrun.com leaderboards and uh, everything that just uh, popped up there uh, in the space of weeks, really, is just amazing. Yeah, everyone suddenly decided that Action 52 was the hot speed game of the summer. Um, I, I, I actually think Alfred and the Fetic is to blame for that. Oh man, yeah, this is getting uh, rough. Oh man. You can do this. Game over. Alright, we're gonna give this just a few more attempts. We are way ahead of schedule, so don't feel too bad about game overing a few times, but I don't want to make you guys watch this for this long. <laughs> yeah, I've already watched this for more than I want to, frankly. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, it's really easy to get like a hundred field attempts on this. Um, <laughs> Even would, in the course of an hour or so, if you're not careful enough. I would comfortably tell you I've done over 2,000 attempts at this game. There you go. How how many minutes is that? How many minutes of your life have you put into playing this game? Uh, conservatively... 16 hours? Oh my god. Well, yeah, uh, I'm pretty safe to say that Koal put way more hours in, also offline, uh, than, me, than I did. I mean, I put in a few hours as well, but, uh, yeah. Jingles, Koal's definitely, uh, we passed the case the back and forth, because that's actually pretty relevant <laughs> for this game. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, before, uh, the jumping strats were introduced, uh, by, uh, well, by Coffin Rocks, who was, uh, twining around with that, uh, basically it was Koal who first, um, picked up this game, and, um, it was me afterwards who decided, well, I could give this a try and, uh, sort of, uh, go for it, and, uh, eventually, uh, there was this passing over of the so-called Feta Crown, uh, which happened a couple of times, oh, even in the course of, uh, like, an hour, like, I would have it, and then an hour later, Koal would have back, something like that. Who's, who's got the world record at the moment? Is it Koal? It is me. Yeah, it's Koal. Just oh, by yeah. a few more seconds. By less Part of me, since, since... Oh, wow. Since, since you just said pass to crown, I do actually, at this point, want to, uh, like, assemble a little crown made out of various different types of pasta and mail it to one of you. That's oh creepy. my gosh. <laughs> I dig it, but that's creepy. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, okay, you can do that with pasta, I guess, I mean. <laughs> Should, uh, you know, like a, like a trophy to, uh, to be passed back and forth between whoever holds the world record at the time. Oh man, that's gonna be if, 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 if we get this into GDQ or something, it can be awarded to the winner of a race or something. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like an idea. I definitely have the best worst ideas. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, no, I, I I have serious competition for that around here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, in light of the fact that I've now been playing this game for however long I've been playing it, I will now give you guys the mercy of not having to hear this music anymore. That was Alfred and the Fedic. You can see why I chose the 100% route for the marathon and not the any percent route, though the any percent route is between 15 and 20 seconds faster. Um, largely because you lose a couple frames every time you swing the colander and it, it's not a very large amount but over the course of an entire run particularly in stage one uh, it does save uh, a pretty significant chunk of time since the current world record uh is literally three tenths of a second ahead of the other uh, the next closest time so anyway thanks again for having this game guys i hope you really enjoyed it and uh whenever the host wants to take it back from me we'll go on to our next title which i am very excited about enjoy and uh, thank Enjoy. you, Fizu and Jinglestorm, for joining me on the couch. You're welcome. Anytime. Even if it is Alfred and the Fetic. Especially if it's Alfred and the Fetic. <laughs>